Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today I'm reviewing the GTEC A10M, an entry-level 3D printer with some interesting tricks up its sleeve. So let's get into it. The A10M is an entry-level, filament-based 3D printer from GTEC. It's a Cartesian-style printer with the bed moving on the y-axis. It has a build volume of 220mm by 220mm by 260mm, which is a pretty decent size for an entry-level printer. It comes with a standard 0.4mm nozzle and uses 1.75mm diameter filaments. The trick with the A10M is that it has two extruders feeding into a single mixing hot end. That's right, this is a dual extruder with a hot end capable of mixing together two different types of filaments. And the GTEC A10M is priced at 299 US dollars, often going on sale well below that. A dual extruder printer at less than $300 is an incredible value. That is, if it prints well. So before we get into the dual extrusion part, let's talk about the quality of the prints that you can expect from the A10M. Overall, I am pretty impressed. The surfaces are smooth, the layers are consistent, and any artifacts that I've seen have more to do with my choice in print settings than what I could attribute to the hardware itself. It has handled layer heights between 0.1mm and 0.3mm with no problem. The print quality is right near the front of the pack when compared to other entry-level 3D printers that I've reviewed. But the A10M isn't just limited to printing one color. This printer's specialty is dual extrusion. The two extruders are mounted at the top of the printer, with the Bowden tubes running down to a single hot end. This gives you the option to print like a normal dual extruder, printing each color separately. But this design also lets you print with both colors at the same time mixing them together in any ratio you desire. You can achieve amazing gradients using this mixing ability, slowly fading from one color at the bottom to a different color at the top. And better yet, you can control this gradient directly on the printer itself. Using the control panel, you can tell it when to start and when to stop the gradient, and at what ratios of the two extruders to use. Then start any prints, and the A10M will take care of controlling the extruders to make that gradient. It's very user-friendly and doesn't require any slicer setup. You just slice the file like a regular one-colored prints and let the printer do the rest. The mixing isn't perfect. A mixture of 50-50 doesn't create a perfect blend of the two, but usually it's more like half of the extrusion width is one color and half is the other color. This could be seen as a feature, as you'll see more of one color when viewing from the right, and more of the other when viewing from the left. That is what gives these ribbed vases such a neat effect when rotated. This all varies based on the filament that you mix. Some filaments have more pigments and don't mix at all, like this black and gold. But some transparent filaments, like this orange and blue, can mix into a pleasing shade of green. So it'll take some experimentation to find the best colors and brands of filaments to use. If you want to use it as a normal dual extruder, you can. Just be sure to enable the prime tower setting in your slicer. Since both colors use the same hot end, the prime tower will purge the extra plastic when it switches between the two colors. Once you dial in the prime tower size, you can get clean separation between the two colors. And the plus with a single nozzle dual extruder is that you don't have to worry about a second hot end oozing while it's not being used. That can be a problem, like this twisted cup that I printed years ago on my Maker Farm Prusa i3V. You can see oozing from the second nozzle on the side, while those artifacts don't appear on the cup printed on the GTEC A10M. Now that we've talked about the party trick, let's finish talking about the hardware. Directly behind the extruders are the filament runout sensors which will pause your prints if you run out of filaments. The extruders themselves are based on the E3D Titan design, with a geared stepper motor feeding the filaments through. The rest of the axes are driven with standard NEMA 17 motors, with physical lever-style end stops used while homing. 
The other big feature that GTEC advertises is the power loss print recovery. If the machine suddenly loses power, when you turn it back on, it'll ask you if you want to resume the prints. It'll then home the X and Y axis, but not the Z, and start printing from where it left off. It works pretty well. If you were lucky and it failed during the infill, you may not even notice. But if you got unlucky and it was on a wall section, you may see some artifacts when it recovers. If you've ever tried to manually edit G-code to recover mid-prints, you know this feature can be a lifesaver. For inputs, the A10M has a micro SD card reader and a USB port, so you can print directly from an SD card or send prints from your computer. It uses a typical two-row LCD panel with a pushable knob. It's nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. Moving over to the print bed, it's an aluminum bed that you cover with an adhesive-backed mylar sheets. The bed is mounted to the y-axis with screws and springs in the four corners, allowing you to manually adjust the bed level. The included knobs make it easy to finely tweak the bed heights. A plus for not requiring me to hunt down an Allen wrench and a pair of pliers to adjust the bed level. The frame is mostly V-slot aluminum extrusion with folded sheet metal parts for the electronics housing, LCD panel, and spool holders. The power supply screws firmly into the frame and neatly tucked behind. Assembly was a breeze. The A10M comes mostly pre-assembled. It was just four screws to attach the upper section into the bed section. Then a few more screws to attach the LCD panel, the power supply, the two extruders, and the spool holders. Once everything was bolted together, you can plug it in using the neatly cable managed wiring according to their labels. And that was it, assembly done. GTEC says it takes about 15 minutes to assemble, but in reality, it took me about 40 minutes while filming. They include all of the tools you needed, various size Allen wrenches, hex wrenches, tweezers, zip ties, etc. It was still a very quick process and simple enough that anyone can do it. As with any entry-level printer, there are some trade-offs that were made on the A10M. The first is noise. The A10M is not the quietest printer. The default A4988 stepper drivers are relatively loud. And my unit had a slightly loose bolt under the bed that caused a loud vibration when the printer moved at just the right speed. The fans on the power supply and the electronics box are constantly powered, so even if the printer is idle, you'll still have fan noises. So if you were planning on being in the same room while the printer was running for hours at a time, you may want to consider making an enclosure for it. The second trade-off is the bed. The mylar sheet that comes with it does have great adhesion with the PLA that I mostly print with. Sometimes, too much adhesion. It's a delicate balance of getting that first layer just the right distance from the bed. Otherwise, you may have trouble actually removing the print. An X-Acto blade and the included paint scraper can help, but be careful not to damage your bed. Or if you're like me on my first day with a printer, be careful not to damage yourself. Because sometimes prints stick too well you can find yourself applying a decent amount of force on the print bed, which can affect the bed level. So I've had to tweak the bed level a few times in the last two weeks. I've actually already have a magnetic removable print bed that I'll be replacing the standard bed with right after this review is done. But that'll be for a future video. The final concern is the runout sensor. Even though they come with the printer, in the firmware they are off by default. So if you're like me and skipped over that part of the manual, you may be confused why it didn't pause. And after you enable it, the A10M does pause the prints and give you a no filament error, but the change filament option was missing from the menu, so I had to change it manually. It's a nice feature in theory, but the firmware could use some work. During my testing, I did have two print failures. The first was this Bulbasaur, where the printer just paused in the middle of the print. I'm not exactly sure what caused it. The printer just paused and started to cool down, and then triggered a temperature error when I tried to resume. 
I've done a dozen or so prints since then, and it hasn't happened again, so it might have just been a fluke. The second failures were these two eagle statues. I printed them with the gradients of red at the bottom, switching to blue at the top. However, partway through, the extruder chewed through the blue filament, so it stopped extruding. The prints finished though, and it's kind of interesting to see how the red slowly stopped extruding towards the top. I restarted the prints, and it stopped extruding the blue at exactly the same Z level, so I believe this failure was caused by my own G-code and not the printer itself. Overall, I am very impressed with the GTEC A10M. It was quick to get up and running, the print quality is great for its price point, and the dual extrusion capabilities is a really neat feature that can spruce up your prints. And while some features, like the filament runout detection, are not the most polished, it doesn't break the experience. So, if you are looking for an entry-level 3D printer around the $300 US dollar price point, I'd happily recommend the A10M. If you want to see more pictures of the prints, as well as print times and settings, you can view my profile on 3dprintlog.com linked in the description below. I'd like to thank GTEC for sending me this printer to try out and to be able to share it with all of you. If you are interested in the A10M, GTEC is providing Hoffman Engineering viewers 10% off if you use their link below. It's not an affiliate link, I'm not making any money off of it, I just thought it was nice for them to give a discount to my viewers. So thank you all for watching. If you have any thoughts about the A10M, leave them in the comments below. And let me know if there are any 3D printers that you would like me to take a look at next. So thank you, and I'll see you all next time.